Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we've just come down to this uh, grassland event in Norfolk with Nicholson's and McHale silage equipment. Um, so we'll just have a look here. We've got a mower and a tractor just coming up and down this field. And uh, we'll have a look at some McHale mowers whilst we're here today and maybe some balers as well. And they've also got some case tractors. There. And if you have a look at the cut down below, you can see it's done a clean job and uh, there's a good little bit of swath on this grass. They've also both got conditioners on them as well to reduce the drying time. to be making a nice swap. It's making a, a very clean job. I don't know if you could pick it up on camera. So we're just with Kieran from McHale. Yeah. And uh, Kieran's been giving me some advice on my tedding for next year. Yeah. Well, for this year, sorry. This year. And uh, what, where I've been going wrong. <laughs> yeah. so, so what do I need to do? What, what uh, need on to a do? tedden, uh, all you need to do is, well, there's a few things you have to look out uh, watch for a tether is, of course, the angle of your tether itself. Like, you know, the more you tilt it forward, the more it'll fire the grass up the way. Right. Like, you know? right. uh, and we, of course, on our tether has a, a bin tying. The reason for the bin tying is that it fires the grass up. Yeah. Because it fires the grass up, it gravity feeds down. Right. When you have a tether that's straight tying, it's firing the grass back. So the more you can tilt it, uh, like forward, the more it's firing the grass up, so it, the gravity feeds the grass down. Right. Also with a tether as well is, you don't need to rev it that hard. Right. Uh, a lot of people rev them a lot harder, and, and that, and especially if his angle of his top link is wrong, he basically is firing the grass back, and he's actually squashing the grass. You want to fire the grass up, and let the gravity feed down. So, so you're trying to flick it up, sorry? Yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, sorry. To, uh, yeah, you're trying yeah. to flick it up. So yeah. then it gravity feeds down. Uh, you don't sometimes need to rev it as hard as what people think. Of course, right. it's a 540 gearbox, but sometimes, depending on the type of grass it is, the grass we're on today, like, we're probably only revving it on that about 450, 460. Right. Um, but then, on certain type of grass, you could be even down to 400. Right. Um, you low straight away when you when you look out the back window and you see the grass. You want to have the grass going up the way as such, whatever, and then, of course, the gravity feeds down. Right. Uh, but the main thing, if you're putting them on a tractor, of course, you don't want the tyre hitting the ground. No. Um, and if you can have it that it's and we call forward so it's tilting up the back of it is tilted up the way so it's firing the grass up more right. um, same idea on a rake really as well a rake yes it's got a 540 gearbox in it mm. but also what determines again you this type of grass we're here today like yes it's fresh grass we're, we're, uh, we're raking but again the same thing with that is we're only revving around 400 rpm there now right um, and the same thing with the with your forward speed your forward speed again is if you see the grass where for example uh, where it's leaving a little bit he's just going that little bit too fast forward right so he just needs to slow back a little bit because last year we i was just using a, a rake which we bought which was this two-in-one rake and i had a lot of tines breaking that year yeah and i think like you say I had four uh, 540 on the on the model on the pto and I, of course i had it on 540 all the time but then this year like you say i'll, I'll yeah I'll, you I'll knock it back it, yeah I'll just bring, bring it, back. it back it'll be a lot easier in a time and just remember as well on a rake or a tether as well is that when you set it and you drive forward, yeah. they always tilt forward that little bit. So allow for that. Right, so um, just adjust it on the top link. So. Just on the top link. Yeah. Um, so you might just want to lengthen the top link so that when you drive forward, the tyre is just cleaning the top of the thing. Right. So it's not that it's, it's, it's uh, you don't want contamination either. You don't want clay getting into the grass. No. And, and of course, you don't want the stones getting in there as well. So the angle, 
makes a huge difference. So you're literally just tickling the surface, aren't you? Exactly. Just, to just, exactly. just enough to grab the grass, but not the soil, obviously. Exactly. And the same yeah. thing with, and again, on a, on a tether, it's the same thing if you're going a too fast forward speed as well, is you're, you're missing the bit in the middle between right. your two rotors. Uh, so again, you're going that little bit too fast. Right. Oh. But even though, but you're 100% right what you're saying, where it says, you know, the 540 thing, don't run it exactly 540 and let it back. Bring course. it back a bit, depending on, I suppose, on the conditions. Or the, exactly. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the grass, like this grass we're cutting here today is very fresh grass, like, you know, um, but the drier it gets, you know, you might less less revs. Yeah. Because the lighter it is. Brilliant. This is a V675, which is that the top of the tail bale of rear bridge chamber. It'll do from a 2 foot 6 bale up to a, a 5 foot 6 bale. Uh, you can do everything in the cab. You can change your inner core density. Of course, you can change your inner core diameter. You can change your outer density and outer diameter. It's all done in the cab. You might say to yourself, why would you want to change your inner core density or diameter? The main reason for that is, is that if you're doing straw and the straw is a bit damp, you want the bale and the inner core to breathe. So basically what we've done then is we can change that density in the middle part, make it softer so the bale can breathe and the straw isn't as good. So it's easier to put it to a straw blower or something like that during the winter. We're baling silage here as you probably can see yourself here now, uh, which is just cut there, we just tethered it there now, and we're baling it there now. Um, the bales we're making at the moment are a four foot bale, but you can change that to whatever size of bale you want, like you know. So if you want to put uh, what we call if you want to make it four foot four or four foot five, anything like that, you can do all that from the box. So you can just change it in the control box in the cab. Exactly. And, and you were just saying to me that the these balers are really good for wet grass, like sort of yeah. wet, uh, like marsh grass, like in Norfolk on the Norfolk yeah. Broads. Uh, it will uh, cut yeah. a bit, no problem. No problem. And the difference in that is is that what we've done is is one third of what we call the chamber is rollers. So there's like three rollers in the chamber, and two thirds of the chamber is belts. So you basically is you're getting the best of both worlds. You can bale silage, but then of course you can also bale straw as well. Yeah. So if you ever open the chamber of a McHale belt baler, you'll see there's three rollers. So that's like one third of the whole chamber is rollers, and the other two thirds of the chamber is what we call belts. Balers have really have moved on from what they were years ago. You, know, you always the drop down floors came in a good few years ago, but now you've got flexi floors, um, pickups. Now you've got cam track pickups. We also you have camless now as well. And the canvas is what they call a six tie-in bar pickup. So it's an extra row of tie-in bars on that, uh, which is again, two big bearings either side of the pickup. Uh, and of course, the pickup is doing a full circle. That's where a cam track, it gets to the top. And when it gets to the top, then the drop away to release the grass is where the camless is. The pickup is going faster to fire the grass back to the rotor, like you know. And we haven't the density set full pressure there at the moment. Yeah. We could go a lot more if we wanted to. So a, a tighter bale, sorry, makes a better bale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for, yeah. Get, getting the air out of the bale for when it's wrapped, and then the two-hour yeah. period. Yeah, so exactly. And that's the key in the whole job is if you want to make good quality of silage, you know, you want the air out of the bale, and when you then wrap it, you want to seal that bale. And yeah. that's the difference on that. And that's exactly what you're saying is the harder you make that bale, the better it will be. The better your silage is, the better quality of silage is, the whole lot, because you're getting that air out of that bale. And the next thing then is to wrap it and to make sure it's sealed. Yeah, well, thanks uh, very much. Brilliant. No problem at all. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so hopefully you'll have seen the silage making process. We've seen the mowing, the tedding, the raking, and the baling and wrapping with the fusion and the baler at the back there. Um, so I've just come up to the stand here and they've got this McHale straw blower, which is called the C460. I was just speaking to Kieran about it. Um, apparently these have got a really good design on them, a swan neck design. And if you have a look inside, they've only got a single drum, but they've been designed to just eat away at the bale steadily. Um, we used to have a feeder bed ourselves, a twin rotor one from King Feeders, um, but we used to find it used to get blocked quite a lot. Um, so I think they've moved on quite a way since we last had a, a feeder bedder. So I know, I know a lot of you guys have asked about feeder bedders and straw blowers and why we haven't got one anymore, um, but it, we just haven't really gotten on very well with our old one, which was, a, like I say, King Feeders. So maybe it would be that Kit McHale would be the one to look at with our new shed, but um, I haven't seen a uh, a straw better built as well as this in a long time. I must say it looks very well made. And then just to the left of that is the R3100, which Kieran was saying to have a look at and some prices of the mower conditioner. These are a really good bread and butter mower now for McHale. And as you can see, they store them um, just on a stand. So you can store them in your shed like that so it doesn't take up as much room, which is quite smart. Um, so it's quite a nice 
display really. And then something else which is quite cool today at this beef farm in rural Norfolk is this is Wademan UK's um, new Wademan telehandler with the new cab. A lot of people think that Wademan are a crammer. They are very similar. They've got a similar boom, uh, similar boom design, but this has got a completely new cab. And it's also, if you, when you get into the cab, it has got a bit of a cutaway as you get in. Wademan, obviously made in Germany. And look at the visibility. It's pretty good. To the right, to the rear, it's like a panoramic rear in the back. Um, so yeah, quite a nice telehandler, something a little bit different. Got a slightly bent joystick there to obviously when you get in, you've got a command arm. Um, you've got all your lights and controls literally just next to your joystick, which, which is quite interesting. This is a different design I've seen on a telehandler. You just have a button there and you can slide the window open rather than having a, a door, which is actually quite a good idea. I like that. Um, yeah. Not a bad bit of kit. Way even obviously made in Germany. This is a 70, 40, 7 meter each, 4.2 ton lift, supplied by Nicholson's. So something to look at if you ever traded the Nemanity. And then here we are, this is the mower we would be looking at. This is a Proglide, this is a B9000. We'd be looking at the R3100. Mower conditioner underneath, yep, it has got conditioner. Nice mowing deck under there. Yeah. Smart bit of kit. And as we've seen them working today, it has worked out really well. I'm sure you can hear the mower in the distance there. And um, what a brilliant day it's been down here today. Thanks for Mikhail and Nicholson for letting me come down and have a look at this equipment. Um, something a little bit different. Should we look at Mikhail machinery for making our silage in the future? And should we try and do a little bit more? This year we'll do the wrapping ourselves with the Tanko wrapper and um, maybe we'll look at an R3100 mower for the future. And one thing about the Irish is they do know how to make some good quality silage equipment. So with that, thanks for watching today's video. Keep liking, keep subscribing, stay positive and all of that good stuff. And I will catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video. Mm -hmm.